Title it Geometric Sequences. This is multiply and divide is going to be the two key things today. And I'll talk about what that means in just a second. Okay. Geometric sequences. All right. Before this, we've talked about arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequences are like add and subtract. Don't write this right now. But an example of an arithmetic sequence is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, right? Or like negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, right? And so on and so forth, negative 15. Those are examples of arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic is add and subtract. That's the ratio difference. Geometric, the difference between them, is going to be a multiply or a divide. I always, I, I often think of it like a multiplying and a multiply. The only difference is anytime you're dividing, you're just multiplying by a fraction, which technically is dividing. So, for example, if we have this, 80, 40, 20. Um, Addison, what's happening between each one of these? Well, Okay, so we're getting closer. So you're technically you're dividing by two, or you're multiplying by what? One. Yeah, so I kind of, you're going to need to think about it in terms of fractions. So if you're dividing by two, technically you're multiplying by one half. So what would be the next term here? What would be the next term after that? Five and so on and so forth, right? So that would be an example of a geometric function. Does that make sense to everyone? So geometric fu functions, geometric sequences, sorry, are multiply and divide. So once again, if I have 8, 2, 8, 32, what's happening between each one of these? Yeah, we're times them by 4, right? So in order to get the next one, we just times it by 4 and get 128. I don't know why I wrote it down there like that. Okay. And if we needed to get the next one, we'd just times it by 4 and so on and so forth, right? Um, now, these things can look as different as possible. But the only difference is, I don't. even though you're dividing, you've got to remember you're always multiplying. If you're dividing, it's actually just a fraction you're multiplying by. But if we happen to have like this, negative 4, 20, negative 100, what has happened to each one of these? Yeah, we're going to be multiplying by a negative 5. So what would be the next one? Uh, uh, yeah, positive 500. Um, so these are simple examples of geometric functions and how they, how they work, right? Remember that we're always multiplying. So if I have 16, 8, 4, okay? Now we've already done one kind of like this. What's happening to these? You're divided by two, but what do, what do I want? How do I want you to say it? You're multiplying by a half. If you're divided by two, you're multiplying. So what would be the next number? What would be the next one? 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 So on and so forth, right? Kind of cool. So no matter how you look at these nothing changes right though and i just got to get this point across now before we go into the next one even though you're dividing by two technically you're not you're times it by a fraction okay william all right any questions on that okay it's time to start i'm going to get to the problem i want you to get to on your homework here okay so it's time to start figuring out what terms are so here's your here's your formula then I want to side. So this is like a geometric sequence formula to figure out a specified term. So if we have a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. a sub n is the first term. r is the ratio or the common difference. I call it the ratio. 
or common ratio we'll call it. This is what's the difference between the two numbers. And then is the spec the term you are looking for. This pen sucks. Okay, so a sub, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, n is the term you're looking for, right? So if I have this, if this is my sequence, that's wrong. No, that's fine. Okay, I was going to do a different one. All right, so the first thing we need to identify is what's the first term? What's our first term of this sequence? 3. What's the ratio? What is happening between each one of these numbers? Yeah, we're times them by 2, right? So the ratio would be 2. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So the ratio is 2. Now, if you happen to be divided by 2, it would be times by a half. Your ratio would be 1 half. Okay? And so on. We're going to do 3 or 4 of these right now. Um, let's find... Give me a number, Spencer. Bigger than 30. Okay. So we need to find the 35th term of this sequence. The way we're going to do this is we're going to set it up. We're going to go a sub 35 equals 3 times 2 raised to the 35 minus 1 like that. It's close. You're one you have in journals a sub 1 times n minus 1 times d plus. Well that would be the one you have is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. This is, that was the arithmetic formula. This is the geometric formula. So they're different. Okay, I need your help on calculator. First off, do we go 3 times 2 first? No. Don't do it. Why would we not do it? Because you've got to do 2 to the 34th first. Yep. Order of operations. So we're going to have 3 times 2 to the 34th. 2 to the 34th is a lot. And then times it by 3, and it's going to give you probably an E number. Yeah. What is it? 5.154 e to So that number, and we're going to do one that's a lot smaller now, but that's that would be where our number would go right there, right? So the 35th term of that sequence is like 5 billion, right? Now we're going to do one that actually puts it into realm, puts it into reality here. If we have this, these terms, so if we have 31575 and I wanted to find the tenth term of that sequence. So you got a couple options here you can go. So what's the what well let's go here. What's the first term? What's the ratio? We're multiplying by five. Okay. So when we plug it in, we want the tenth term. Our first term is three. Our ratio is five, and the term we want is 10. So we're going to go 10 minus 1. So we're going to go a sub 10 equals 3 times 5 raised to the 9th. So I'm going to need help. Five, the answer is 5,859,375. So the 10th term of that sequence goes all the way into the millions. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. That's big. So That's cool. You got that by finding the 9th power of 5 and and Yep, you got to go order of operations. You got to go exponent before you multiply. All right, here. You guys are going to try one on your own. You guys ready? Um. Two ten fifty. There's your sequence, and I want to find. The eighth term. Go for it. Try that one on your own.
What'd you get, Nathan? One five six two five zero. Oh. One hundred fifty six thousand two hundred fifty deviate term of that sequence, right? Now realize something: these we're not going to have gigantic terms like above thirty, like I said before, because you're going to start getting into e if you go up there too high, and it may become a mess. So um, we need to do one with a fraction, though. So let's say we had Jackson. What's your favorite number? Well, you got to pick two would be it. Okay, two ways. All right, here we go. So let's say we had two one half one eighth. First off, what's our first term? What's our ratio? It's one fourth. Do we divide them by four or just one fourth? Okay. So the way we're going to set this up. Is we're going to go a sub, what term do we want? Let's say 12. The 12th term of the sequence. So 2 times 1 fourth raised to the 12th minus 1. It's going to be ugly. It's probably a decimal. Isn't it a weird decimal? Hit. Oh, okay. We're going to change it. Go to the 8th term. Well, hit. is it really? One fourth raised to the seventh times two. Is being A's we went down to like two. No. Hit math enter enter on it. Try it again. One fourth raised to the seventh what? times two. Eight thousand Hold on, one over. Eight thousand one hundred and ninety two. That's what I thought. <laughs> so you probably did you did you go one fourth raised to the seventh? Okay, so listen, yeah, hit math enter enter and you'll be fine. The disc? It should that should be your answer. So realize when you guys hey, if you put one fourth into your calculator, I would put it in parentheses and raise it to seven. Sometimes if you do it like this, if you just plug it into your calculator like this. It depends on the calculator, but I've seen it before where they just raise the 4 to 7 and they don't do the 1, even though I guess it wouldn't change it there. But I've seen it before. Anytime you put fractions raised to an exponent, put it in parentheses and then times it by 2. Okay? All right, so either way, it's not going to matter whichever way it works. This is a geometric sequence. It's multiply and divide, right? But it's technically not divide. It's just multiplying by a fraction. Any questions for me? Can we do this? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. I got to get it created real quick.